A new dawn has begun for Nigeria as newly sworn in President Inubu has taken the first step to tackle corruption. In his inaugural speech, President Inubu noted that the matter of fuel subsidy is over for Nigeria as the funds for subsidies will be diverted to other things like public infrastructure, education, health care and jobs. Although Nigerians have begun experiencing fuel scarcity, with some filling stations selling as high as 600 naira per litre and some not selling at all, the decision is also to curtail any diversion of money and is for the country's growth. Joining us in the studio is a Harvard certified leadership strategist and consultant, John Ekundayo. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us on TV's Thank Breakfast. Thank you, Veronica. And in our Abuja studio, strategist, policy analyst, group CEO, global investments and trade company, Baba Yusuf, joins us as well. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Right. Let me begin with you, uh, Baba. I wonder what came to mind when you heard the president, his inaugural speech, say that uh, fuel subsidy is gone. Uh, yes, he had said that uh, he was going to address the matter of fuel subsidy uh, in his campaign. And uh, even other uh, presidential candidates of other parties also uh, were having a unified voice with regards to the removal of fuel subsidy. But uh, we see the diverse or divergent uh, reaction to uh, the statement by the president. Uh, there are those who have said that perhaps he shouldn't have made that statement at the day of inauguration and perhaps talked about it later on. But for you, uh, what do you make of his decision to make that statement on the, the inauguration day? Thank you, uh, Veronica. Uh, President Tinubu did the right thing. Uh, he's taking a critical step to demonstrate the kind of boldness with which he's going to drive this government. A very assured, I mean, sure-footed, decisive, and front-facing. The issue of fuel subsidy has been a recurring issue in the polity for many years, and indeed, is so controversial that previous administrations that attempted to remove the subsidy have has met have met you know very stiff resistance on one side by the citizens and their concerns as to how this will impact on the economy and of course also on the other side by vested interest. If you recall, President Jonathan Goodluck went a little bit further to try to execute but was stopped by the huge outcry by citizens. Uh, President uh, Buhari, who before he became president, was very consistent with regards to the need to remove the subsidy also could not really fully execute, albeit towards the end of his administration, he was able to initiate the process. So it's a reality that Nigerians have to, have to face somehow. Now the question is, the die is cast. Uh, how, where do we go from here with regards to, 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 to how we do it? So to my mind, it's the right position to take. It's something that has to be done. It is a campaign promised by the president, and he has started delivering by making good the promise on the day of his inauguration. Indeed, what will be critical for the president to enable him to deliver this promise is to now look at the house and the winds this will be done. I believe in the coming days, the picture will be quite clearer. Um, come back to the studio now to compare your views, uh, Mr. Yusuf, with, with that of Dr. Kundayo. So what, what do you think? Because the Labour is saying now, top of the, of the grievances is the issue of timing and the fact that it is insensitive uh, to Nigerians. Um, well, what I would say is that when we talk about timing, you know, the last administration was looking for most auspicious time. And unfortunately, they didn't get that time. Uh, to me, I would say it's an auspicious time. Is it because... Many Nigerians were not even expecting. And I will give an, anal an analogy to that, personally, myself, you know, a kind of uh, analogy. I remember when I was growing up, and then I, I used to have uh, play football, have sore on my legs, and my mother, you know, keep on, you know, bathing me up to the age, age of eight. You know, that's just funny. But then 
I discovered that whenever I saw in my leg, you know, one thing the woman would do was just to just overlook that place as if the place did not exist. Why burden the rest of my body? And then suddenly he would put the, uh, the, the thumb there and put the thing and, you know, put it there and the, the whole soul will go out. It's painful. And that's one thing. That's why I'm, I'm going to that you know, uh, uh, analogy. It's painful, but then every soul there will go out, the place will be dressed, and then I don't know what my leg will have been now, you know, that I'm an adult. So at times like that, when, you know, the nation was not even expecting, I think it's an auspicious time. Now, we cannot look down. It is still up to the end of June, and June has not even started. Today's 31st of May. So we still have about 30 days or so to really ruminate. What I would say is that the government needs to interface, dialogue, you know, meet with labor unions, you know, and get ideas, you know, from people. Because from the Electoral Act, mind you, 18 months after the signing into law of the Electoral Act, subsidy is gone. In so the petroleum industry at yeah sorry uh, 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 petroleum industry at PIA yeah you know subsidy is gone it is just a matter of stressing look this is the reality we are in and it is better write that first day so that because and remember the president said when he was president elect that hmm, Nigerians prepare for top decisions ahead you see but we are going to get it's like a pilot when you take off and then. I mean, you, 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 you want to be, you are thinking you will be cruising at high altitude, but suddenly there's a storm. The pilot cannot say, well, we are going back. You know, he has to take decision. And he is the pilot now, and all we have to do is brace up. You have to brace up, fasten your seatbelt, and then I believe it's an auspicious time. But we need, there's, there's need to be dialogue, to dialogue across board, and the government needs to come out clean. There should be transparency. We have had past government. They have not been transparent with us. As an elite, I will speak. As an analyst, I will speak. They have not been transparent. The Borari administration said the prices were changed three times. Mm -hmm. That, oh, subsidy is gone. But then suddenly they told us subsidy has come back. And I was wondering, even I that am an elite, you see, it is, we need to be educated about oil subsidy, you know, when the Naira changes, I mean, when there is the, the Naira flow into it, you know, will it come back? Or one thing or the other? When the price of oil in the international market changes, will it come back? These are some of the things. But then, ultimately, what I would say on that subsidy is that it is high time the government told the Nigerian lies, look, just like you have tomato in the market, like now, tomato prices has gone, has skyrocketed, and nobody is subsidizing, and we're eating. The same thing in oil, you need to know it, like any other item in economics, <laughs> that, look, it has to be subjected to market forces. Let's know it now. Let's take the bitter pea now for the malaria to be killed once and for all. And then we can channel all that. That's why I say transparency. All the gains there. Let Nigerians know and let it go somewhere that, oh, government said, health care, education. What about agribusiness that we can invest in? And then, in a matter of six months, one year, we get this comeback to even fund the economy and make the GDP to grow, like the president said in his graphic speech, 6% growth. Wow, that's great. To make it happen with the economy bleeding now, we need to take painful decisions, but pertinent decisions. So it is auspicious. Right. Uh, the matter of transparency, that, that's where I will pick it from, from what you have said, Dr. Kundayo, and uh, taking it to... All right, uh, because uh, I am wondering, I will get back to our guest in our Abuja studio much later on, uh, this matter of transparency, how the past administration handled this matter, because some Nigerians feel betrayed. Uh, you would recall that uh, days leading up to uh, the outgoing administration time in office, the Minister of Finance, I think, came out to say that they were uh, soft peddling on the matter of removal of a few subsidy and that they would leave it till much later on. And uh, Nigerians seemed to have relaxed. So how the ad past administration handled this matter uh, is somewhat, like you mentioned, quite concerning for Nigerians and uh, the feeling for betrayal, why some said they had to just relax, thinking that all was well. Now for this administration, when you talk about transparency, in what ways would you want to, the government to be transparent uh, when we are looking at transparency in specific terms with regards to this matter of fuel subsidy? Because many are accusing the president for the removal. Meanwhile, he said 
that uh, there was no provision made in the, the budget. budget so we, we need to understand this matter of transparency better. Yeah, when I say transparency, uh, uh, I think there was a time in this country, I think it was during, uh, was it during uh, uh, one of the military regime that uh, the former president, Buhari, was made the, uh, you know, uh, the, the head of the presidential, I mean, it was a petroleum trust fund or so, PTF, you see, and funds from there were into infrastructure. Now, I think the government, you know, could adapt or adopt something like that in managing whatever thing from the subsidy or subsidy that has been removed. Imagine you know, spending whooping trillions within six months on financial subsidy, which are benefiting very, very few Nigerians, you know, and the rest of the economy is bleeding. So the thing is, what I would say is get some uh, 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 credible Nigerians to really like come together in a committee to really oversee this, explain, you know, what the oil subsidy is. People still don't understand you see, when you say you remove, will it come back again? They are not sure. So there is a need to explain this, the nitty gritty of oil subsidy I mean, by this committee to them, and then engage, consult, and feedback the government. And through that, then whatever gains from there, maybe monthly, on a monthly basis, accounts are rendered. And we could see, oh, this is what is coming, the saving that's coming from there. Oh, it's going to be used for this, it's going to be used for that. So that it won't be just that some people are sitting on you or maybe some cabal or some you know, that they don't know about. When there is transparency, when there's accountability, mm -hmm. then Nigerians will believe, okay, yes. And then in a matter of months, like three months, we'll see the effect coming to us. But then the government also needs to cushion the effect now. They need to cushion the effect economically on Nigerians. And that is a fact. Dr. John Ekundayo uh, talking to us on the matter of uh, the statement made by the president uh, about a fuel subsidy and uh, the reactions that has been trailing that statement. Uh, and speaking about reactions, yeah. we saw immediately uh, that uh, fueling stations, some fueling stations shut down their services and uh, some are not, we're not selling, and then even as at this morning, there are reports of some persons selling at about 1,200 naira per liter. They are those selling at 600 naira. And there are those who are saying that uh, perhaps the actions of these marketers are justified uh, because they are looking at what the prices might be, talking about the landing cost, the transportation cost, much later. But then talk to us, what the, the reaction of this market is. Uh, first of all, Veronica, I start with my own experience. Um, I finished a program around after 7 p.m. in Lagos, and I was heading towards uh, um, Shagam, somewhere around that. And I had to buy on Lagos about an expressway for 700 naira per liter around 8.30 p.m. yesterday. You know? And so likewise, many Nigerians. So this is to let the president know and the government know the harrowing experience. Now, what are transpire, you know, because you are talking about landing costs and whatever, and I was just shaking my, hand, my head. What has transpired between Monday inauguration and Tuesday? <laughs> Less than 24 hours. We can see the callousness and the wickedness of Nigerians to ourselves. Call them marketers, whatever. You have this supply already. You are not bringing it from anywhere. You know, in economy, simple economy stand, you see, demand, supply, whatever, it has not actually been affected. And even this subsidy something we still cover at the end of June. Mm. For crying out loud, we are in May. The, today is the last day in the month of May. So it is, followership is even our part of our problem in Nigeria, and I've been saying that, you see. So this is an example. Now, the government of Ekiti State, like of no imagine Ekiti State, I quickly met with the uh, um, foreign marketers. He met with them in this office. He called them, and he, he, he gave them, oh, the instruction, and they discussed. And thereafter, he sent the tax force out, and already the filling station has been locked up in Adwekiti. Yeah. And the same thing, the state governor should act, you know, the government should begin to act. I remember those days that people from DPR will go out and go to filling station, bust the thing, place open, dip the uh, whatever they need to dip into their distance, you know, so that they sell the fuel to, at, the, at, the, at the market price, you know, to, to people, because people are suffering, long queues there. In fact, some of them are not even selling, and they have. So, so are we in a lawless society? So what is happening? The government shouldn't just sit back. The, like like uh, Governor Biodun Ibanji did in Ekiti State. It is high time they took proactive steps to arrest this, uh, uh, because nothing has changed. No, no price, nothing about you know, supply, demand has changed. It's just human wickedness. So it is high time the government took the step to arrest this drift 
so that you know the the the, the, the hardship could be lessened on Nigerians because that is the way. Because if not, the the the, the people will begin to say our government don't even care mm. about us, about what we are passing through, about our problems. And it is time now; it's high time the government acted. That's what We've I was saying. Uh, you know, the uh, independent marketers as well as the um, you know other related groups like the uh, major oil marketers, we've seen them also going ahead as hailing the president for this decision, saying it is timely and all that. But on the streets, um, it's, it's much different. So the, um, the point I am trying to get your take on is what they need to do now from even within their associations, because there appears to be it's what I want to sell. I, I can decide to sell at any rate I, I, I want to. So in terms of, you know, tightening some loop ends now, even within the organization, there doesn't seem to be monitoring even from within their own ranks. Prior to this, uh, prior to the inauguration address, uh, market prices have not been uniform, if you can recollect, you know. You find some people selling at 195, some 200, you know, some at why it is something they are about, you know. And then when you see Q, maybe three, four, and you can't wait, you, you go, go to where you can buy 195, you know. So I think, you know, and now so, subsidy has not really gone. It has not really been removed, you know, so to say. So it is still what you have in stock or what will still be supplied to you till end of June that you will sell. So what I would say is the marketers and all the stakeholders should come together now and meet, you know. Now that we have this situation, and the government, where government will come in, in my own uh, way, is that the supplies. Because the president met with the, uh, uh, the group and managing director of NNPC uh, mm. yesterday, and I'm sure of you know, abundant supply. So if that's the case, then let them work 24 hours and make sure from you know, the, the depot, fuel is supplied everywhere in the country. You know, especially NNPC, some of the uh, major marketers, Orlando, uh, and you are many of them like that. Let will be supplied to them so that they won't have an excuse that we don't have. Uh, it's not in our distance. Then, what price they have been selling before? Because nothing has changed. Don't, don't forget, nothing has changed about demand and supply. You know, let them say, you, you are selling at 220 before, or 200, or 185, or whatever. No problem. You know your landing cost, whatever. Sell at that price till in between this period of transition. It's still a period of transition between now and at the end of June that the first subsidy will go. And then, there will be ongoing meeting, interface, interaction to actually see how we are going to operate, the, operate the, uh, uh, operationalize the subsidy removal thing. And then within that time frame, the government should be thinking of what can we do to lessen the pain, the hardship on, on the, of Nigerians. Uh, Let's uh, also quickly talk about the role of NNPC so far in all of this. Um, reports are saying that even NNPC say they cannot obviously, you know, sustain the burden, saying that the government is even owing them trillions of naira. But NNPC themselves, people have said they also need to do some clean house or house cleaning, so to speak, in terms of you've, you've talked about transparency and talking about NNPC, what's, what's your take? I see NNPC, to me, where I don't know, that's my own perception. They are like a dancing guy about this whole thing. It's not, it's, not, it's not really about, it's not just about, you know, the, the price the, that, I, I mean, you know, the prices that the marketers are selling. It's about how about people are not selling. You know, in those days we had the DPR. I don't know whether it still exists now. The, the Department of Petroleum, they go around, they monitor the prices. They monitor this, what are they doing? Why should it even be the governors that we have to meet? It is their job, you know, to do this. But they have not been doing it. So they have not even helped the matters. You know, they don't have to wait for Mr. President to order them, direct them. It's their job, it's their duty. You know, they have failed Nigerians in this aspect. You know, because Nigerians are suffering out there. You know, I, I think that is where, but talking about NPC, uh, about uh, transparency and whatever, where the, the president himself has said that a lot will be done. And really, that is one of the places to actually touch light so that a lot of things will work and should work seamlessly. Mm. That's what I would say to that. Now, as we transition, uh, because like you rightly pointed out, uh, the removal of huge subsidy is until the end of June. June. So I am looking at this point how the government should navigate this transition period and such that it cushions the effect 
on the average Nigerian out there? Because we know the spiral effect on food pricing, on the pricing of so many things across the country. Mm. How should the government manage this? We know that uh, the government, like you mentioned, uh, is having meetings with uh, the CBN governor as well as uh, Labour, who are also speaking. Uh, at some point, Labour is saying that uh, the government should reverse uh, this, this policy, so to speak. But as it consults with major stakeholders, how should we look at managing uh, the effect? Mm. It's, it's a gamut of uh, uh, complicated, you know, when it comes to this. Because now, it's easy for those Nigerians who are public servants, those who are teachers, nurses, medical doctors in government service, you know, can say, okay, you are in service, we can do this for you. You see, but majority of Nigerians are even outside the public service. They are traders, they are artisans, you know. So how do you actually reach out to them? You see, but uh, like I was discussing with uh, uh, an economist yesterday, you know, we need to really look at this situation and, oh, maybe possibly, you know, have to get some financial palliative down to Nigerians, maybe through their BV or whatever. Is it because this hardship is getting into, because by the time people are selling at 700, you know, some first stations are selling at 700, some are selling higher, you know, and we don't know. So that's why within this time frame of uh, uh, end of June, there must be, the government need to really come forcefully into this situation, you know, ensure supply one and make sure that the marketers behave. And why in between that transition period, like the, the, the issue of uh, uh, how to actually, you know, give a safe landing for the oil subsidy uh, uh, remover, you know, especially in uh, meeting palliatives to citizens, is very important uh, uh, to, to really use the time to discuss that. Right, we hear Abuja guest is available. Now. All right, uh, so Mr. Yusuf, it's good to have you join us uh, back now. L let's quickly compare some of the views that have been shared by I guess in, in Lagos uh, with you, let's run them by you. Uh, for example, your take on the, the long queues. Uh, 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 Dr. Ekudaya was sharing his uh, experience, you know, at a particular fuel, in, uh, fuel station, I should say. Uh, of course, queues have, uh, are longer than usual. Prices have also, you know, skyrocketed. What's your take on this um, reaction by Nigerians? Well, it's a reaction to the statement of the president. And um, what I will expect is, um, of course, it's always like that. The moment there is even fuel scarcity without such a very strong policy statement from a president, you see the panic buying, you see the breakdown in supply chain, uh, which is a result of this bold statement. But yet there is need now for the president and his team to go back you know, to the playroom and review their playbook. There should be an action plan rolled out with clear pathways to exit this uh, situation. First of all, this impact as much as there is no way we can avoid the pains, there must be, you know, high minimalization of the impact on the citizenry. And to engender confidence also and support for the government is for NNPC and all the supporting agencies to ensure that the supply chain is not completely broken on one side. Constructive engagement with all the stakeholders moving forward at the top line. Uh, we have a president that has a high execution quotient. We expect that to happen right from yesterday. We, ex we hope and pray that there is a clear pathway to, to, do, to this process of uh, exit from the subsidy because a policy statement like this is one thing, but ensuring it happens is another. This is a 50 years, you know, uh, issue that has not been resolved. So we don't expect it to happen with a snap of a finger or with impulsive activities. There must be a strategy to this. I believe the president must have had it sorted out. But I also believe that until he opens what I call the book of reality, which is different from the handover notes, a takeout from the situation analysis from his team, that he will be able to have a clear pathway. But in the interim, uh, a word of comfort, a word of encouragement with regards to the action points that will be taken very important. Enforcement and regulation by the NNPC and the regulatory agencies to ensure that, you know, we have supply of this product in a way and manner that, you know, it will not disrupt and at a pricing that will not be too impactful. Of course, because it's a fully deregulated market, we should also expect it on the side of the populace. Uh, the sad thing is that... Um, uh, this impact 
is coming to stay with us. I hear the recording word which I agree makes at with regards to the removal of subsidy, and that is palliative. We should look beyond palliative. I hope and pray the president has an overall package, you know, beyond palliatives, uh, what I call the shock absorbers, you know, for the citizens that have been suffering the buggeries of economic downturn for many years. As much as some of us support this policy, it must come with minimal impact as much as possible on the citizenry to engender confidence and support. And of course, policy cohesion, you know, and coherence moving forward, not just the subsidy. We expect that there will be a holistic approach to this because removal of subsidy alone, and I hear a lot of positives about it, but we also need to flip it and look at the negative impacts and see how we can counter those in ensuring that at the end of the day, the objectives are achieved. You know, so just apart, apart from palliatives, we need to look at other, you know, short to mid-term impact and indeed quick wins, you know, for citizens to see that this is the way to go. Right. And staying with you, uh, Mr. Yosuf, uh, the president has said that the monies uh, with regards to the fuel subsidy will be channeled instead now to matters of uh, better investment in public infrastructure, education, health care and job creation. Now, we've been talking about matters of transparency when we make these kinds of statements, when we hear this kind of statement from government. What would you expect to see from government with regards to transparent operations and disbursement of these monies uh, into these various areas such that it can build confidence of the average Nigerian in the government? Veronica, quintessential leadership from the top. We expect to hear to go almost pari passu with the removal of subsidy, a significant scale down of cost, cost of governance, a significant scale down of structure of governance, which take a lot of our money and driving governance. That will also engender confidence and hope and provide some level of transparency. With regards to further transparency, like I said, clear action plans, you know, maybe a committee or whatever to come and tell Nigerians this is the pathway to the removal of subsidy. And day in, day out, because this is a critical action point for this administration, for Nigerians moving forward. So I don't mind if we see a situation room where in the next one month or two, people are kept abreast of what is happening with regards to removal of subsidy so that everybody can see on a dashboard what is going on. But uh, apart from the uh, enlightenment and, uh, and, and the information sharing process, we need to see government also taking proactive action with regards to cost of governance, with regards to accountability moving forward on all other activities of governance. I believe that will you know, give people some kind of hope that, okay, maybe this time around, things will happen differently you know, on all sides. And like I was saying earlier, Enforcement and regulation, very key, because I believe that part of the problem are the regulatory agencies, you know, in trying to enforce things that should be enforced. But importantly, leadership from the top. The removal of subsidy sounds like an oil and gas issue, but it's a holistic, nationalistic issue. And therefore, we need to hear these conversations expanded beyond subsidy removal to impact on other economic variables that either directly or tangentially impact, you know, on the subsidy removal. And if these discussions are ongoing, you know, talking directly to the citizens of the country, I believe that slowly but surely we get there. Engagement with the labor unions and other critical stakeholders, not just uh, meetings at the wee hours, also with critical objects. There must be give and take in this kind of conversation for these things to work because it's not easy to uproot uh, an entrenched 50-year 50 50 year economic value that Nigerians perceive they are benefiting. A lot of people believe that that is the only thing they are benefiting from successive administrations. So it's not easy to just apply a political solution, you know, to this issue. It must be all-encompassing, and I believe that is the way the president should move with his team moving forward. Mr. Yusuf, so we can get final takes from uh, our guest here. What or should Nigerians expect now in terms of pricing now that NNPC will not in, be involved in, in fixing prices? And the president has also said he desires and will work 
uh, to actualize uniform exchange rate. So after June, when the subsidy removal, you know, is expected to take effect, what should we expect in terms of, you know, pricing of petrol? You see, <clears throat> this is a reality we'll have to face. This pricing will definitely escalate. And after a while, it will, you know, uh, streamline. We saw it happen during the, you know, movement from the, when we saw the deregulation in the telco, you know, way back in the early 2000s. So it's a natural fit. We even saw it in the case of uh, diesel and in the case of kerosene. Albert, we saw some shocks maybe because of the brick, brick, uh, uh, geopolitics, global geopolitics and other economic imperatives. But with regards to pricing, that is going to happen. The impact on inflation and other economic variables, macro and econ uh, microeconomic variables, is going to happen. And that is why I was saying, I was talking about the shock absorbers that government needs to look at, you know, to provide in order to provide succor. But it's a storm we all have to brave at the end of the day. You know, so pricing will escalate, uh, highly so, because now the pricing of PMS will be determined by the global, you know, price, you know, uh, trend, as, as you, if you may like. And therefore, it is definitely going to escalate. Of course, government also has to play a role to ensure that the players in the downstream sector do not, you know, so change Nigerians or take undue advantage. That is a function of regulation, you know, monitoring and regulation. The president will have to assert himself on this to ensure that he achieves this objective without being sabotaged by civil service or vested interest. Right. And this matter coming to the studio now draws attention to our refineries, the mm. matter of conversation about how we must ensure that we get our refineries working. We have spent so much trillions of naira talking about turnaround maintenance, talking about just trying to get our refineries working, but uh, we are not seeing uh, that happen. I wonder if you also view that as perhaps a way to go with regards to this matters of fuel scarcity, uh, fuel subsidy, addressing it, if, if the government should also look into the aspect of our refineries. And uh, yes, we know that uh, the Dangote refineries will be coming upstream, and there are those who are believing that when it, you know, it begins to run, uh, there might be some stabilization, we might witness some stabilization with regards to fuel. But what should happen to our refineries? Uh, our refineries should work. But I don't know the magic wand the new government will put into our refineries. The government refineries to work. Because for the past 80 years of uh, Muhammad Buhari administration, it's like you just put in something and you are not getting anything coming out, which any businessman will not do. And I, with President Tinobo there as a financial engineer, I don't think we invest in such kind of moribund enterprise. So, but let's just thank God for Dangote refinery coming on stream, uh, and I'll be producing soon. But the thing is, uh, and I think Bua also is building around Cross River also. So maybe before the end of the year, that will come on stream too. And somebody was telling me about two modular refineries also already operating. So if we can have more modular refineries, coming in, then we have supply of refined crude, you know, working for our country, which we lessen. That is, you know, when we subject this thing to market prices, you know, all this thing we are crying. If we do our own world better way, and this is where the government needs to come in, to encourage more modular refineries and bring all this to board. And when we, ha instead of getting our crude out, mm. you see, look at the cost. You get it out, you refine it, you bring it back. Bring it back. So, landing cost. And even at the port at times, that's where an NPC uh, comes in, inefficiency. Some of these ships will be there for one month mm. and bat it, and it will not be clear. So if we have all the local production, we have a refinery working, we will have you know, the, the prices subject to uh, marketing forces normalized. And in a matter of like one year from now, two years from now, Nobody will be talking about uh, fuel prices and that because you can buy at any price you want to buy for whatever filling station. Like it happens in senior climbs like that. You know, you go from one place to the other and you even have the quality of the fuel you want to buy. It's not the same quality. Like you, you are in UK, you are in Singapore, you are in uh, New Zealand, you know, like that. So it depends on the marketer you want and what kind of quality of fuel you will get to that. But right now, 
we need more of the refineries local to work. Because really, why should we be producing crude for crying out loud? And for years in year out, we are carrying our crude out for a, to a nation like Singapore, for instance, that's not, that's not producing oil to refine for us and bring back for us and making our economy. Ah, you know, the present government should see that this comes to a stop. In fact, there should be, like my colleague in the studios in Abuja said, there should be an action plan. You know, in the action plan, it should state where our crew will no more go out. Mm. It's a shame. You no more go out. Maybe right. two years from, from now. So I think that will be the way to go. All right. Uh, we'll have to uh, wrap up the conversation on uh, this matter right now because our time is up. But we must thank you, gentlemen, Baba Yusuf. Uh, policy analyst, uh, strategist, uh, group CEO, global investment and trade company, as well as uh, John Ekundayo, Harvard certified leadership strategist and consultant for your time on the program. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Veronica. Thank, Thank you. you.